And hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kyle the Pug Sports Review Show, episode number 32. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on thir the 32nd episode of Kyle the Pug's Sports Review Show. Now, what do we do on here? Well, we bring you the three hottest sports topics in the professional world, collegiate world, high school world, whatever you want to call it. We bring the sports to you on this channel. So again, welcome to Kyle the Pug Sports Review Show, episode number Thirty-two. I'm Kyle the Pug, aka Kyle Modi, the host of the most, the man with the plan, and as always, this lovable dumbass is here with us today. Even though he got trolled on my main channel, it's Cowboy Nick. Yeah, Cowboy Nick, Cowboy Nick, and all I have to tell you is what, what, what? Okay, and Cowboy Nick, you're gonna get some hate mail today. We got a little bit of rain. We got a little bit of. Yeah, yeah, that's why I noticed. There's a, I think there's a little, it's a little too rainy going on here. Well, we need the rain. Well, yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, it was raining pretty hard. I mean, even from last night, kind of yesterday. Well, not yesterday morning, but I mean, it kind of was raining yesterday morning. But I think over here, early in the morning, it was raining pretty hard. So yeah, the rain was definitely yeah. appreciated. Yes, and we really needed it because we were like, really, we were like, you were like becoming like, I thought I was going to have to give me a camel and some, and like some, and an outfit because I was like really thinking, yeah, are we turning into like the Sahara Desert and everything? Okay, well, anyways, moving on here. So our topics today, we got our rapid-fire Week 8 picks for the NFL, and we also have, of course, you know, Hockey Town as we begin, you know, the, um, as we always do throughout the hockey season, as Cowboy Nick talks about all his hockey stuff and, you know, whatever he does. But first off, we're going to give out our first impressions of the NBA season as of right now. Now, going into, of course, Tuesday's game, we're going to go from Tuesday and all the way to today here really quick. We're going to try to jump this really, really fast. Is that the Golden State Warriors got blown out in their own stadium by 29 points. Now, the reason why I say 29 points is that last season, they only lost by a combined total of 25 points at home. And in this opening game on Tuesday, they got blown out by 29 points to San Antonio. How's that for a start of the NBA season? Well, that's for, that, that is pretty amazing. But they did play that's just amazing. pathetic on their part. Amazing for the Spurs, but pathetic on Golden State's part too. Even with the addition of Kevin Durant, also. Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. But the fact is, when you look at this game, the one game I I, I knew this was going to happen. And I said this um I, I said this a couple of times. I knew that I knew that Cleveland was going to um, beat the Knicks. But when you look at the Spurs in this one, I knew this was going to be. I I kind of had a feeling that it was going to be like this because. It's how it started out last year. The Warriors were like they were like that team that no one expected to do good, and then all of a sudden they um, they come back. But I was so I was like thinking to myself when I was watching this game, I was like, "Oh, Spurs, you gotta do this. You gotta you gotta show people that you're the that you're the Spurs, from, you're the you're the team, you're the top one, of the top team. Because you gotta show them, you gotta show them." And they came out and just they did they did what they you know they did what they had to do. And, no one was going to stop them, and I thought the Warriors were going to be a close. I thought it was going to be a close one with the Warriors, but you know, it, it well, really nobody expected the blowout. Nobody expected the blowout by 29 points. You know, if, in the Oracle Arena, that's for sure. And then, of course, yeah, I, never, I didn't either. And of course, uh, the Tim Duncan post era has begun over there as well. And speaking of post eras, we're, we're going to switch ship to a Wednesday here really quick. The Lakers beating the Rockets at home, 120 to 114. Really good, high offensive contest here, and I feel like the Lakers have definitely improved as like as a young nucleus. Of course, with Julius Randle, and then you got D'Angelo Russell also, and then the courts Jordan Clarkson can kind of be the sixth man as well. I mean, they've been they've been improving a little bit, especially in the preseason. They definitely showed that they can do something. Yeah, you know, but like I had a couple of my friends were saying. That with this Lakers game, they should have won the. Uh, they should have won like the old school, like the old school clock. Like I, I don't know why my friends are saying this, but 
they're telling me they Well, your friends are idiots. Why didn't, why didn't the Lakers wear, like, the, like come out there with the, like, have an old school night where they came out <laughs> with, the, with the Converse and the old school socks? Well, I have no idea, but I've never heard of such a thing. But either way, the Lakers off to a good start. They are going to be playing on the road at Utah, so we'll talk about that here for another time. But right now, I want to talk about to another um, uh, another game that actually, this still involves your Spurs though, Nick, so don't get me wrong. Um, the Sacramento Kings opened up their new stadium, and my God, it was pretty lit though. The, the, the opener and everything else, the, everybody was excited to be there, and it was, oh my Lord, this whole state, the whole new stadium was lit. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a nice stadium, but... to the Spurs here really quick. They kind of spoiled, um, not spoiled, well, they did spoil it, so the Spurs won 102-94 against the Kings in their, the Kings' new stadium. Um, so, going back to there, what do you think of the Spurs winning that game against Sacramento? I, I want your honest opinion about that. I thought it was, I thought to myself, yeah, the Spurs wanted to win this, but I did not expect the Kings to get 94, to make it 94-102. I didn't expect it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, let's think about it here. I mean, Sacramento, they definitely have a good squad, but their management just sucks. And here's the other part to this, too, is DeMarcus Cousins, of course, he had an exceptional game as the star player that he is for that team. 37.16 rebounds, a double-double. And everybody's saying, oh, you need to trade DeMarcus Cousins. Oh, no, you need, he's a cancer to the team, you know, blah, blah, blah. But if he actually improves his behavior and sticks with his team, you know, from here on out, I think he can become a star caliber. Well, he, not not to mention that he actually is a star caliber player for Sacramento, but he's actually one of the more dominant big men that I've seen as of you know the past few years in the NBA. So that tells you something. Yeah. I'll put it. I'll put it simple like this: he's growing up. Yeah, he's definitely growing up. He should be maturing, and yeah, that's basically all there needs to be said about him. There's no question about and that. And I'm also going to say this. TV networks, you guys need to stop playing the intros and then, like, uh, like halfway into the intro of the game, go to commercial. You need to stop that. Cause like, last night I was watching the Clippers and the Trailblazers game, and the game pops on, and all of a sudden you hear, here are your trail, your four and then it goes, have you had a problem? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, that was probably accidental. They probably didn't mean for that to happen. It was probably yeah, a technical it, problem on their end. So don't don't try to judge them too fast. Yeah, but you see what I'm saying? They have done it with other with other sports games as well. Like you'll be like, like sometimes I've seen it happen. I saw it happen another time. I was watching a uh, I was watching a uh, San Francisco game and they were doing uh, scrolling was doing the entrance and all of a sudden they just switches from him saying the like the entrance and it switches over. 
do you, do you know that Ford, uh, our new Ford, uh, this new model Ford 150 is coming out today? Don't forget to order, don't forget to order your new model, this Ford 150. And then it switches right back to the game, and they've already got the Pledge of Allegiance and everything, and you're just like sitting there. You mean the national oh, anthem? Yeah. Yeah, and you're like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, it just, it's like, when is it going to end? All right, before Cowboy Nick gets a little too out of hand with this story, we are here to move on here really quick. So we are now in week eight of the NFL season, and it's time for not just our NFL picks for week eight, but our Halloween picks as well. Yeah, it's going to be great. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, that was a sound effect that, that kind of went horribly wrong. But anyways, guys, let's get to our picks here for the NFL. So before we get to the picks, we have the Titans over the Jaguars, 36-22. Blake Bortles, passing leader, 337 yards, and, you know, DeMarco Murray, 123 rushing yards, and had an exceptional game as well. Alan Hearns only had 98 receiving yards, didn't really – I mean, he did all right, but, you know, he – he didn't, he didn't, yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's the Jaguars we're talking about here. But anyways, let's get to our NFL picks of Week 8. So, let's get started. So, we have the Washington Redskins and the Cincinnati Bengals playing each other in London on Fox. And that's at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. So, this is the second game in London. And for my pick, I like the Bengals to win here by at least 10 points. Yes, I do, and I can't wait to see, um, like, I love watching when they play in London, because it's like, like, you see the people in London, uh, like, they're like, like, you see them? Give out oh, your pick, oh, Nick. Football. Give out your you pick. You see them, they're like, oh, a football game, and then, like, they just, like, <laughs> freak out when they see some American uh, football, and they see, I've actually heard some people, like, it's just not, fun. it's just not football. <laughs> Give out your pick. Yeah. Give out your pick. Third time. Uh, hold on, man. I'm like, trying to get the, my computer's being kind of uh, an ass right now, so I'm trying to get the score. Like, well, come on, dude. All right. All right, I'm just going to make a pick for you then. Cowboy Nick picks the Washington Redskins by a touchdown. So there you go. All right, so. Okay, you're probably mad at me because I made that pick for you, but we got to move on here really quick. So Kansas City, Kansas City at Indianapolis here, which is going to be an interesting game to me though, because you know the Chiefs are decent, the Colts are kind of improving from you know the um, from um, the half for the first part of the season, and I like the Colts to win at home here, and it's going to be it's going to be you know quite difficult for the Colts to actually well not difficult but. They're gonna get the Chiefs are gonna give them some trouble, but if they're gonna win, T. Y. Hilton, Andrew Luck have to be on point. So I expect you know the passing game to be in full force, you know, with the Chiefs' awful defense. So I like the uh, Colts to win. And I would say by at least a touchdown and two field goals. So that'd be twenty points. Yes, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. Come on, you bloody bastard. All right, well, Nick, you're not British here. Let's move on. So the Oakland Raiders at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you don't you don't have to uh, ask me for this pick. I like the Raiders here by at least uh, two touchdowns. Yes, I agree with that. Raiders, two touchdowns. <laughs> Nick's such a copycat. The Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> if that happens throughout the rest of this segment, I'm going to laugh so hard. The Seattle Seahawks go into New Orleans to take on the Saints. And for this one, I think it's going to be a shootout here. But the Seahawks are going to be on the bigger end of the shootout. I would say 38 to 32. I'm going to say 39 to 32 because I think the Seahawks are just going to, after that embarrassment that they had, I think the Seahawks are going to push a little harder. If you don't show up, I swear to God, I'm a, I swear to God, they're going to put me in jail for freaking uh, assault, assaulting my computer. Well, how would they put you in jail for assaulting your computer? That makes no sense. Because I'm going to give this damn freaking computer a black eye. Well, it does, I, computers don't even have eyes, honestly. They have, they have mouse pads, they have everything else, but they don't have eyes, that's for sure. Unless you're unless you're looking at something I don't know, but 
then I'm then again I don't want to know about it anyway. But anyways, um, the Detroit Lions. The Detroit. Okay. 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 Chill. So, anyways, the Detroit Lions and the Houston Texans play each other. And for this game, it's going to be quite an interesting matchup here, to say the least. But I like the Texans here, though, at home by one touchdown. I think it'll be a close game. Uh, I'm going to say this. I, I say two touchdowns because a lot of people aren't giving the Texans what they, what they really deserve. They're kind of playing them down. And I think the Texans are going to show that they, um, they're going to actually show that they, they deserve to be a team to be recognized. All right, so moving on here really quick. This is going to be a battle between the two, some of the worst teams in the NFL. So we have the New York Jets on the road to play the Cleveland Browns. So for my pick here, I'm just going to say this right now. Cleveland Browns get their first win at home against the Jets by a field goal. It's going to be by a field goal. I have to agree with you. I have to agree with you on that because I don't. I just can't trust the Jets right now. But I don't I trust the Browns play. either. But somebody's got to win this one. Pretty much, it's going to turn out to be an Arizona Seattle game. That's going. It's going to be Arizona Seattle 2.0. Yes, and after seeing what I saw at the Bulls game with the with Bulls fans um, wearing both their Bulls jersey and their Browns jersey, I think it's going to be So, New England Patriots are on the road against the Buffalo Bills, and for this game, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be Tom Brady versus Rex Ryan, I'd say part six, I don't know, somewhere six or seven, I don't know, I can't, I've lost track of that, but the Patriots win, but it's really closer than most people think, it'll be by at least a touchdown, maybe, maybe yeah. six, two field goals for that matter, at the minimum. Yes, I, agree. I have to agree with that, because I, I just got to say this, Okay, so just uh, let's, let's not steal copyright terms now. So, anyways, moving on here. Speaking of the Cardinals, we were talking about them a little bit ago. They play the Carolina Panthers at Carolina, which of course the Arizona Cardinals didn't even score a touchdown last week. But who's gonna win this one? Um. It's going to be an interesting matchup because if you're talking about a game that happened, you know, last year, I don't know about last year in the playoffs, but it would be, if you're talking about like a postseason game, it would be one thing. But this game, uh, I don't know. I mean, I would like to see the Panthers win, though, but their defense has been kind of slacking off as of lately. But I will try to at least give them one more chance here to at least win, win one game. Here's another one of my upsets. So. I say the Panthers win it by three field goals, so that's nine points. Yes, I agree with that. I, I got to give the Panthers a shot, and I'm going to say after that embarrassment the Cardinals uh, had last week, I got to give it to the Cardinals. But I'm going to say I'm going to say this. I, I am going to say this. All right, well, hold that hold that thought because we have three more games and we have two minutes left here to go. So hold that thought until the end of the show. So, San Diego at Denver, and I like Denver at home here in a, a, yes. a beatdown. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I agree. I agree. I like, I like I'd say three, three touchdowns, maybe add on a field goal to there, so that'd be like uh, 24 points. Yes, I agree. But I'm going to say this. The Chargers are going to try to put up a good defensive play, but i got to get to the Broncos. All right, well, the Chargers are awful at defense, so that's why the. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, so I mean, the Broncos are awful at offense, but something's got to give there in that game. So moving on here, Green Bay Packers at the Atlanta Falcons. So this game is going to be a good game, also, but it's going to be Matt Ryan versus Aaron Rodgers. You know, Falcons are definitely improving. You know, over the, you know a couple of years. So, however. When you look at these teams at home, I mean, the, the Vikings are, we'll get to the Vikings here in a bit. The Vikings have been the dominant team in the uh, AFC North. I mean, the Packers may be a wild card team, but you got to give this one to Atlanta here because, you know, Atlanta's been doing very good, though. And that being said, they'll win by at least a touchdown, and they'll get, like, a defensive stop at the end. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that, and i got to go with the, uh, the Falcons in this game. 
And I'm going to say this, though, I, I am going to say this, it's going to be a close one. So I believe that the, I believe that the Falcons are going to get this with a field goal. Because I have to give this, I have to say this, the Packers do have a pretty, have a, a good defensive play this year. Okay, so we got to hurry up really quick. So we got Philly and Dallas. I would say Philadelphia on the road with the upset by at least 10 points. Um, I'm going to say the Cowboys by um, two field goals because I really do think everyone is underestimating Dallas, and I think Dallas... Oh, no, I didn't underestimate Dallas. I'm just saying I think the Eagles have the better offense here, in my opinion. But don't forget, don't get me wrong, Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott have incredible rookie se- rookie years, but, I mean, yeah. some, I think it's going to, well, it's, I don't want to say it might stop, but I'm just going to say that, you know, it could stop here. For the, at least for this week, I think it kind of gets shut down. And then Monday Night Football, Vikings, Bears, Monday Night for Halloween, Vikings trample all over the Bears. It's troubling. Yes, yeah, so I have to. Agree. I have to agree with that because I believe that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chicago, but um, it's, it's it's like this. The Vikings this year are. It's, I know it's still early, but I have to say this: the Vikings are the team to um, to beat this year, and I say that the Vikings might even be a contender, just like like Chicago is right now uh, in baseball. I say the Vikings are going to be that team that we're going to say is possibly going to be a Super Bowl team. All right, so moving on to our last topic here of the show, and everybody knows what the last topic is. It is called Hey, Hey, It's Hockey Town, and you know who the host is. So, Cowboy Nick, the floor is yours, pal. I know, and it's going to be great because right now, as it is, uh, Cowboy Nick is going to be the final thing quick incident has been taken care of, and Quinn is, um, is, has um, decided uh, to take an anger management course and has decided as well to pay a restitution to the line, the linemen for his injuries that were uh, contended in that game. And Kowalski, um, everyone has been asking about this since uh, it's been said, how is Kowalski? Well, Kowalski is fine. But and he, um, he is fully he is um, he's doing well after after some surgeries. But he um, unfortunately he is going to miss a total of twenty games um, um, this season after um, after sustaining a um, a brain injury to the left side of his head. Um, so he um, he's going to miss twenty games until until he is fully healed. The swelling in his head was reduced and. He is talking, he is moving his legs, and he is pretty much doing uh, really well. But the fact is, um, the player that gave him the injury is being fined and will have to, is also being charged with um, anger ma- with uh, taking anger management and is lucky that he has not been suspended. But the, um, but the Sabres have said the... Um, the Buffalo, Buffalo has said this, that they are sorry for the embarrassment that was caused to their team. They do not allow this to happen, so punishment from the team internally will be happening. Um, with the, uh, tonight's games, we will have some great ones. The Blackhawks go, um, going to New Jersey to play the Devils is going to be an interesting game. The Rangers and Hurricanes playing each other tonight is going uh, to say it's going to be one of those games, but even though the Rangers are a powerhouse to uh, the Team to beat. Don't underestimate the Hurricanes, and we'll see how that game goes. It starts at 7:30. But the Jets are going to face the Avalanche tonight, as the Jets and the Avalanche are taking on each other at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Colorado. Senators um, um, and the and the Flames are facing off the, uh, against each other at 9 p.m. Um, Eastern Time tonight. Spoilers and Canucks now. People have been saying with the Canucks, they're not happy. They're, they're, the city of the city of Vancouver is not happy with the Canucks, and the Canucks um, office management has been uh, has been talked to by the NHL. And if the Canucks do not improve their score from the season record is of uh, four to two, and do not win six more games this year. The management will be changed. Uh, the city of Vancouver has said this. The management will be changed 
and the current managers of the team will be will be permanently um, kicked out of the organization without pay and without income, and will not be allowed to come back to any other team for the embarrassment to the NHL. The the Blues and the Ducks will play tonight. The Ducks will be at home, and with the Ducks as well, um, the NHL has warned the coach, the head coach for the Ducks, that if he does not improve his plans of winning and actually trying to do better, that the coaching, that him and his coaching staff will be replaced for not doing what is right. And a lot of fans have said thank you. Even though a lot of people are saying that it's not right, they're saying that it's, it's what needs to be done. So, as well, Stockton Heat will be um will be having um uh, some games coming up um a uh, home game to be coming up in a couple of days as been talked about on um, KJOY and a lot of the other stations and that night will be um if folks haven't heard about this for the past three days a new a new um, thing has been happening and it's called Iwo Jima Day for all you folks who haven't seen this on it's been on the internet on the news Iwo Jima Day is going to be the day that the flag the American flag that was flown over Iwo Jima will be placed in um, will be placed in um, the Washington um, Art Museum as an art piece for history of the uh, of the historical flag that was flown over Iwo Jima and will be placed uh, in that uh, in that museum within four days. And for all those who had family members that were in the military around their graves, a flag representing uh, representing when they fought will be placed there as an honor to the, to them and to the soldiers who died at Iwo Jima. Kyle? And hello. So what do you have to say about that? It's very interesting, I can tell you that much. I know, but what do you think about uh, their, their sporting events starting uh, this year with in hockey? Is, uh, they're saying they're going to have a, uh, a more sporting event that uh, they call Iwo Jima Day. What do you have to say about that? All I gotta say is, slow clap. Back to you, Nick. Well, that is all. Those are the all uh, the topics for today in Hockey Town. So it's back to Kyle with the um, with the ending part of the show. Oh, and also don't forget, folks, if you can, pick up a copy of Battlefield One. Battlefield One, a great game to play. But, but please, as I said last night on the show, stay away from the shotgun, Kyle. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that later on. But, before we end off the show, uh, Game 3 tonight of the World Series between Cleveland and Chicago at, at Wrigley Field. So, who do you got in that game, Cowboy? Again, I have to go with the Cubs. They, they play so well at home. Like, when they're at home, they're at Well, no teams. kidding. And I, and I, what am I saying? is when the Cubs are at home, they see with their crowd behind them and everything like that, they feel more encouraged and they feel like they can win all. So, I, yes, I have to give it to the Cubs, but it is going to be a close one with the fact that the Cubs do what the, what the Indians do. I'm going to have to say it's going to be a close one. And I'm going to say it's going to be it's going to be Cubs. I'm going to say Cubs 5. Indians four. Um, I'll just tell you this right now: the huge pitching advantage here goes to Kyle Hendricks and, of course, the Chicago Cubs. And with them being at home, I mean, with Kyle Hendricks pitching at home, it's going to be uh, one of those things where he's going to be emotionally ready to go and he's going to be hyped up. And I think Wrigley Field's going to get lit. So that, and I don't mean like them being on fire. I'm talking about like like getting hyped up, pumped up, ready to go. For those who didn't know what that yeah, meant exactly. exactly. So, exactly. and with that being said, I like the Cubs here to dominate. Not in the close one, but to dominate. It's not in the pitching role, but in the offensive role, base stealing role, and pretty much everything on the stat that there is to Game Three's matchup. So, I like the Cubs here at home, five to one. That, or, or it could be 5-0. to zero. Maybe if the Cleveland offense doesn't do anything, it's Kyle Hendricks. But I think they'll score at least one run off Hendricks at the most. 
So, and then I think the Cubs will probably win like five to one, you know, somewhere around that ballpark for sure, for sure. <clears throat> so, right, right. so with that being said, of course, thank you guys so much for joining us here today on the Kyle Plug Sports Review Show. And if you guys did enjoy the show, please drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe for you to my channel. Definitely helps my channel grow, and we're on the road to 50 subscribers on this channel. And on my main channel, we're on the road to 5,000 subscribers. And, of course, that my main channel link will be in the description below, so you guys can go check that out, too. So, with that all being said, I'm Kyle the Pug, a.k.a. Kyle Modi, the host and most of the man with the plan, and for Cowboy Nick. Yeehaw! Cowboy Nick! Cowboy Nick! Can't you smile? Cowboy Nick. Okay, yeah, that was kind of a bit too much there. And I'm Kyle the Pug again, and I will see you guys Wednesday in our next show. So have a good day, and as always, stay safe. Peace! You've been out all night, I don't know where you've been. You're slurring all your words, not making any sense, but I don't fucking care. Feelings for you